Good morning, this is Video View. It's the first time we've had a chance to look at some of the newer videos around for 1980. Our first guest tonight is a lady who's uh, been gracing the network chart recently with the Pogues, Kirsty McCall. Good morning. Thank you. Hello. You okay? Yes. Good morning, Mark. Hiya. And you're going to be at Hammersmith on the 18th of March? That's right. Gigging in London Town. Okay, with the four. Look forward to your comments as well. So here we go. This is the, the first real video view for 1988. Let's get straight into it. And please, don't ask me why. Don't ask us why. Why they did it, but they have. They've got a smash hit on their hands at the moment. <laughs> Here's the Stranglers with the kink song, All Day and All Night. Great version of the of the Kings record, but um, if no, if someone hadn't told me it was there, I would have thought it was the Kings. Mark, I, I could tell the difference, yeah. But I mean, what, for what you know, what's the reason of doing a cover version so similar? Yeah, they have smoothed it out a bit. I don't like the bits they've added actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the brass is about the main difference, isn't it? Didn't they? I don't remember brass on the original, but um, no, there's no brass on the original for sure. I can't. You know, I, I tend to agree, I really can't see why they've done it, except I can't think of any other group that could have done it and got away with it at all, that would even be entertained, you know, entertain mm -hmm. the idea of doing it exactly the same, practically. Because um, Hugh Cornwell sounds so much like Ray Davis when he sings it as well, it's the same kind of intonation. Mm -hmm. But everybody likes the Stranglers, so they'll get away with it. So I always liked right. the guitar solo in the middle of that, so that's one of... In that? In, this, in, yeah. in the original, I like the guitar solo. Right. It's good. That's the best thing of it. I wonder how people... I didn't like like, it in you, you know when you did a version of a Ghost in My House? Who, yeah. who actually kind of says, let's do that? I mean, there's millions of records to choose from. Why are those particular records, I wonder? Um, don't know. We, we just cut that as part of four songs, you know. It just happened to be a cover version. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know everybody says that, but that was the way it was. Right. I, I look for stuff that's uh, lyrically very interesting, you know. But what about, all right, let's go back to the video then, because um, it, w nothing special, really. That's why I liked it, actually. Yeah? It look, look, looked dead cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, the cost know, of about a tenner. I'm really good. impressed by cheap videos, because, you know, it's all, it's, anybody can have a hit record if they've got 150 grand to spend on the video. Let's mm -hmm. be honest about this. If they'd left the brass section out on the girl, it would have been great. Yeah. Just there was two, I mean, there's a lot of girls in, who dress like that in videos at the moment, and it's a bit samey, but... I really like, well, I've always sort of had a soft spot for the Stranglers, so I'm not going to slag it off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a thumbs up then? Well, All, yeah. Mm, mm, wouldn't buy it, wouldn't turn it off. There you go. All right, looks good. On to our second one. Now, this one uh, was recorded originally by Santana, and then <laughs> that record was written by a guy called Michael Alatunji. See? What a, what a memory this boy's got. Right, that's Jingo, not Jimbo. <laughs> As you thought it was. <laughs> Jimbo! <laughs> Jimbo and the Jet Set. It's great who show, I've not seen it. Who is it written by? Michael Alatunji. Because I was, I was going to say it sounded about as African as a can of pineapple juice, you know, but I mean, <laughs> I suppose it must be a bit more, but just bored me stupid. Apart from the animation, which was obviously very good and very expensive and has been done better by the Tom Tom Club, I think. And mm -hmm. Cucumber That's why Studios. I turned it off, because of the artwork. I can't stand that sort of artwork. Well, really... Tom Tom Club did it years ago, didn't they? They had Cucumber Studios everywhere and they were very good, I thought, at the time. But it's been done. Been there, seen that, done that. Next. So have you not actually <laughs> heard that record before? No, never. I've heard... Uh, did you say Santana? So, well, Santana recorded the original, then the version by uh, Candido, which has been... I mean, if you go to a disco and they don't play it, I mean, the DJ will get lynched. And, in fact, that is being reissued this week as well. But it's been around for, you know, ten years or so. Oh, that's one thing I don't know about then, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. All right. So it's... Uh, now it's thumbs down for that one. Especially the video, yeah? No... Not impressed yeah, at all Yeah, the video especially, I think. Oh, I don't... I'm not very impressed with that guy just playing a bunch of synthetic sort of... Keyboards yeah. with a with a headband doesn't look dead uh, dead ethnic to me. No. All right. Well, let's see what you think of this. Do you remember a group called Swan's Way a few years back? They had that. That's Maggie and Rick. That's Scarlet Fantastic. Plug me in. I uh, preferred their last single, which was uh, No Memory. <laughs> was better that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I think so. He has a very hard life, that Rick. The next last one, it was. In a cell, wasn't he? That's <laughs> 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 right, Scarlet Fantastic then. Um, well, I didn't. I wasn't mad for the song, but I quite like her voice. She sounds like sort of Jean Pitney slowed down. Yeah. It's quite interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah, they should bring the voice out more, shouldn't they? Yeah, they, they should make more of her voice, really. And, and um, I mean, 
I thought it was quite funny as well having that guy sort of being abused, you know. I thought, I mean, it appealed to my sense of humour, having him sort of, his clothes falling off as she's photographing him. It was a bit of a change from the obvious where the girl's clothes are falling off and the blokes have taken the photographs, you know. It was all right, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't crazy about the song. It was uh, not as good as the last one, as you said. Right. Well, anything else to add to that one? Um, no. No. Sorry. Not, not, a, not a fan of that, then? I think the group are OK. But the vids so. not. Voice should right. louder. OK, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Kirsty. Your views are welcome. This is Video View, and uh, still to come, banging out the hits 21 years after the original quartet back in 67. Here's the current network chart smash, Family Man. Yeah! Right, Demi's Roussos on the drums there, didn't it? It was spontaneous. That was uh, Fleetwood Mac and Family Man. Love the record. Not too hot on that video, though, I'm afraid. Mark? Uh, it was... Very average, yeah. Mm. What would you do when you get got a band like Fleetwood Mac, you know, kind of super groupish? What? How do you cast them though in these roles? I mean, what would you what would you like to? How would you like to see them? Well, I think uh, the, the market they're going for, you know, it's like a what I call a patronising market. You know, the sort of the people who buy the records probably are like that themselves. Yeah. So, so it must be hard, <laughs> yeah. So, the people who buy the records are not as fabulously well, rich be more as they were. It would be to film in, in the suburbs or something. Be good. Right. Mm -hmm. Kirsty. I thought it was very, very dull, extremely dull. <laughs> so, really? yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a fan of Fleetwood Mac generally, and I don't... This isn't going to convert me, you know. Right. Have, have you heard the LP, though, Tango in the Night? I've heard bits of it, but I wouldn't it's want to hear any more. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, I think it's one of the best albums here. I think it's... Well, it uh, probably is for them, but it's yeah. not my cup of tea, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to say, oh, they're rubbish, because right. I'm sure they're very good at what they do. It just doesn't turn me on at all. But this point, though, that, I thought, for the old the video. Yeah. Anyway, now, this one should be good. In 1970, there was a group called Hot Legs. They had this record out called Neanderthal Man. Then there was a combo called... Oh, man, we're a <laughs> one who actually sits down and thinks, hey, we'll do this video, right? We'll have all these people walking in front of us with funny instruments. That's Godly and Cream, and uh, when, I, when I think that the uh, looking down the list of the, the videos they worked on in the sort of like 80s and that, there's Duran Duran, Police, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and the excellent Rocket, um, I would have thought different, different people. Yeah, I think they get fed up of doing all that stuff for other people, probably. Yeah. But what about that? Would, I mean, you make, you make videos, right? Mm. Would, would that have cost millions of pounds? Or is that a kind of, in the studio, a bit of trickery, do you think? I don't know. They've probably got their own stuff, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> got their own little Cine 8, yeah. I used to play football with uh, Lol Cream when I was a kid. Yeah, is he any good? No, well, he was about ten years older than me, and he used to play and kit and everything. And kick well, his own boots. Around. That's cheating, yeah. isn't it? His own boots? <laughs> what a cheat. <laughs> I played football once with Hugh Cornwall from the Stranglers at Wembley, and I nutmegged him. But anyway, Kirsty. I've never played football with any of them, no? but um, well, they make very, they're kind of very inventive their videos because they always use an effect maybe that you haven't probably seen before on anybody else's. But it doesn't excuse the record in the end. I think, I mean, generally, I think videos are evil things. You know that they do sell rubbish, don't they? A lot of them, and. Um, that sounded like, whoa, Candida, we, we can, can make, make it together. together. Come on. Was that Tony Orlando or it not? It was Dawn, it was, was Tony it? Orlando and Dawn. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not a million miles away from that song, is it, really? <laughs> you watch, that'll be in the shops again this week, Dawn. <laughs> Re-release it. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, now a lady from Dublin who... <laughs> All right, I made a mistake, didn't I? We had Lucas Aid, we've had Band Aid. Well, that is Sinead. Is that okay? <laughs> right, let's put that right. Sinead O'Connor. Sorry about that. You know, I just I just read what I write down most of the time. Right then, Marcus. What do you reckon? Uh, the song sounded interesting to me. Yeah. Video. Yeah. Uh, video has got a bit boring after a while. So. Mm. It's not the type of thing. Cause so it was better when it was close up on her face rather than. Mm. Uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? The, the, the kind the of the bald head, head style. But I mean, a lot of videos when they come on the telly, you can sort of you immediately you're glued. But that wouldn't have uh, hooked you? I think they're sort of pushing her more as like a mature artist, you know, like sort of a, mm -hmm. Like she doesn't really have to do videos or she doesn't like doing them. Sort of She's arrived. Right. I think considering how interesting her voice is and how fabulous she looks, that they could have made an awful lot more out of the record and the video. Right. And um, <laughs> it sounds a bit like X-ray specs to me. It sounds a bit dated, but I think she was fabulous on that, uh, that track, Heroin, that was on the... I think it was a film Soundtrack. called Captive. We th we've decided we think it was Captive, but... Um, 
the edge wrote the music and she sang it, you know, and oh. it was, she's got a fabulous voice, right. definitely. Well, let's try and cram one more in then. Here's a record which comes out on Monday. It's described by the group as uh, four minutes of crashing noise. The group are called So. Are you sure? Yes, I am. That's what it's called. That off rather quickly because we are running out of time. Lots still to come here on Night Network. Mark, quick opinion on that. You was up like a shot. Yeah, I don't like it. Groups with the uh, bass players with ponytails <laughs> out. <laughs> right, <laughs> Kirsty. I'd go along with that. Oh, right. <laughs> so, what's been out of the the lot we've seen tonight? What, what's been your fave? What will you give the thumbs up to? Uh, surprisingly, the Fleetwood Mac one was probably yeah. the best one. <laughs> All right, and Kirsty? I don't know. I think it had that, the old film. Either that Scarlet Fantastic one or um, the Stranglers minus the girls. Right, would have Stranglers been nice, yeah. and Fleetwood Mac. All right. Well, I mean, to look at, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being on tonight. Thanks. Hope you've enjoyed it. Good luck with the new. Now the single's out Monday. It's called Victoria. Yeah. And the album is called The Friends Experiment. That's right. Good. That's that one done. Anything <laughs> happening? Oh, Got, the, the Pogues going on album. Tour the Pogues. Yeah, the Pogues will be touring England. Um, Halfway through February for a month. All right then. Thanks a lot for being on tonight. Still to come, we've got Lee John. He'll be here very soon. We've got Hazel O'Connor. We've got Pillow Talk. And coming very, very soon, and I mean very soon, another dose of Batman. See you next week. <laughs>